So I think I've come up with a fairly decent combo for Benji here. Now it's not as great as the whole wizard instant cast, don't let your opponent react shenanigans, but I think it's a pretty fun combo nonetheless. You will also have to forgive me a little where I am, the downlight central. So no matter where I put my desk, there's always a few spots that's a bit tricky to see, if you will. But let's go over the combo, shall we? So in terms of equipment, we have a mask of shifting perspectives, flick knives, vest of the first fist, snapdragon scalers, and two harmonized kadachis. Then we also have our hand, arsenal, and deck. So I have stacked the deck in our favor. So there's only a few cards left, all the pieces we need to really pull off this combo in full effect. But it's not as tricky as you might think to actually get the game in this state for you to actually pull off the combo. In fact, I've built a whole deck around it that we'll get to in a little bit. All right, let's take a look at our hand. So we have knives out, spring tidings, bleed out, and a hurl. And then our arsenal is a second hurl. Now it's really important that you have a blue and a yellow hurl to make full effect of Benji's abilities. So your attack action cards with two or less power can't be defended by cards from hand. So that's really helpful to make sure that you get your hits across. Then he also has the first time attack action card you control hits each turn, the next attack gains plus one. So that's where the blue and the yellow comes into play. Other than that, you might think we wanna play knives out given that it's probably a dagger combo since we do have flick knives, but no. Knives out is here for the sole purpose of being able to pitch for three and having a cost of zero. So you can use any blue card that does have a cost of zero because that will trigger the harmonized Kadachi's go again effect. Right, let's get to it. So to start off, we're going to swing with a harmonized Kadachi, pitching our knives out, meaning we're floating two resources for which we can now attack with the second harmonized Kadachi, floating one. And now we can move on to really just throwing out all of our cards, including what's in our deck. So to start off, we're gonna play the yellow hurl for two, meaning it's still safe thanks to Benji's effect. Your opponent can only block with cards from their arsenal or equipment. And then we're also gonna pay the one extra to throw one of our daggers. We're also going to activate our vest of the first fist as our reaction. Well, it's more of an instant, isn't it? It doesn't really specify. I feel like it needs an errata. Anyway, so we gain two more resources. So now we're floating two. From there, we can play our second hurl, which has plus one thanks to Benji's second ability and allows us to discard and damage using our second dagger. And we're still floating one. So between the two swings we took earlier and then the two throws, we should hopefully be able to play Bleed Out for free, which you can't really see because of, of the lighting. Oh well, Bleed Out. And then from there, we can play a Spring Tidings. Now Spring Tidings is the cornerstone of this combo. So when it hits, draw a card for each other attack action with two or less base power you control on the combat chain. So one, two, three, meaning we get to draw three more cards. One, two, and three. So we have a Bleed Out, a Spring Tidings, and a Concealed blade. From here, we get to play our next bleed out and then another spring tidings comboing in our concealed blade as an attack reaction. This means that the spring tidings draws one, two, three, four, five more cards. One, two, three, and four. We don't actually need that fifth draw, so you could chuck in something else if you wanted, you know, some sort of safety or instant ability that you can think of. And we also get to re-equip one of our daggers because of concealed blade. From here, our next step is to well swing with the weapon. So we're floating one, so we get to swing, hit, hopefully, and then we get to unload a few more hurls. So first off, we're going to play our blue hurl. The reason we're playing blue is because the concealed blade gives plus one, meaning this blue hurl now has two power, meaning it's still safe. If we play the yellow hurl, it would be at three, and it would not be protected with Benji's effect. We're also going to use flick knives this time to discard our dagger and deal that one extra hit. From there, we can just rub salt in the rune with another hurl for free, just for some bonus damage. And here's the combo finisher, double stab wound. So you're gonna play stab wound. You're gonna activate your Snapdragon scalers for a go again. And then you're gonna play another stab wound. So how do we do in terms of the combo? Well, if you remember, we've thrown our daggers three times and we've swung three times with it. So hopefully they've all hit and that means we've dealt six damage. So stab wound is doing two, Ooh, a bit closer for you, two plus six, so eight, 16, then a hurl for two, brings it to 18, flick knives for one, 19, hurl for two, due to the concealed blade behind it, brings us to 21, 
Spring Tidings for two, 23. Bleed Out for two, 25. Spring Tidings for two, 27. Bleed Out for two, 29. Hurl for two, because of Benji's effect, plus the Harmonized Kadachi that we threw, three, 32. Hurl, three damage altogether, 35 damage. And then our two initial swings, plus the previous swing for another three, brings us to, hopefully, if I've done my math right, 38 possible damage if everything lands. Now, obviously, not everything has to land because we are playing Blitz, meaning that of this damage, only 20 has to get through. And chances are, by the time you get to the end of this combo chain, both stab wounds are going to damage with full effect, especially since both of them can't be blocked from cards with a hand thanks to Benji's own effect. Now, there is one way that you can sort of upgrade this combo to sort of insane levels, and that is through one card called Predatory Streak. So Predatory Streak allows you to create three Crouching Tigers in your Banished Zone. You may play them this turn, go again. Now, if you haven't realized, a lot of the Dagger support cards have no cost. They allow you to hit for nothing, and they do Decent damage, especially bleed out if you can play for free. And obviously stab wound is fantastic if you can get a few more swings off or a few swings of higher damage. So thanks to the Crouching Tigers we can create through Predatory Strike, one, two, three. We could now bump up the amount of cards we draw through the first Spring Tidings by three, and of course the second Spring Tidings by another three. This means that you now have room to add a bunch of cards, like more copies of Knives Out, or anything to buff your your daggers with extra cards. For instance, you could even take out Flick Knives, run another Hurl, and run the Blade. Oh, it's just called Blade Cut, right? And thanks to the extra cards you draw, you can probably pitch and play it, and your daggers gain plus one this turn. So there are lots of ways to really, really bump this up if you do want to get to that level, but I think it's fairly consistent even without the Predatory Strike. Okay. So why don't we actually go over the deck list so I can sort of explain how it is a bit more consistent than you might think. So then, how exactly do we make this combo a bit more consistent than it may seem? Well, I think one thing players fail to sort of interpret is the fact that Flesh and Blood is a game where you can count cards. Due to the pitch mechanic allowing you to place cards back to the bottom of your deck in the order of your choosing, you can memorize and structure your deck, especially towards the end of the game, in a fashion that suits you to unleash certain combos. For instance, this combo. So how do we maximize that ability? Well, we come up with this style of deck, a stall heavy, defensive and mill style deck. So we're using cards like Golgarian Tome, Cash In and Tome of Ferrandale to accelerate our drawing and mill cards. Then we're using cards like Rise Above, Peace of Mind and Sink Below to play defensively. And then we have cards like Sift and of course just the ability to pitch to actually recycle cards in the order we want to the bottom of our deck. So what does Sift do exactly? Sift allows you to put X number of cards from your hand on the bottom of your deck and then draw that many cards. So any of your combo pieces you can send straight to the bottom of your deck in the order of your choosing to replace with other cards that you might want to use and mill out. Then Gogarian Tome is a minus one to your overall deck due to the simple fact that it costs zero, has go again, and allows you to replace it with one card. Then cards like Tome of Ferrandale and Cash In are both plus one. So they allow you to draw two cards, replacing both of them and gaining an extra card, as well as allowing you to again pitch cards to recycle to the bottom of your deck and really save those combo pieces. Then we also have Fog Down, which allows us to essentially stall a little bit by denying your opponent the ability to gain go again on non-attack action cards. So against players like Dorinthia, who want to buff their weapons with non-attack action cards, this can come in handy. And then we have this rounds on me, which is another great draw mechanic that also minuses damage for a whole round, meaning that you not only mill, but you're then also able to prevent your opponent from doing more damage than you might like. And of course, like I said, sink below allows you to react defensively through it being a generic defense reaction that also allows you to cycle a card to the bottom of your deck and then rise above, which you can pay its cost to put a card back to the top or you can pitch and again, cycle cards to the bottom of your deck. Both I'm running yellow and red as these are the higher defense brackets, both four and three respectively. And then of course we have all our combo pieces. So Stab Wound, Knives Out, Concealed Blade, Spring Tidings, Bleed Out, Hurls, a few extra copies so you can attack and pressure as well as Nourishing Emptiness, which is sort of the first attack you really want to get off because it does then allow you to mill one extra card on your next turn due to its draw mechanic. And then of course, equipment, we've got our standard setup here, 
but there are a few switches we can make. For instance, we can change to Zephyr Needle if you want to pressure a little bit more damage, though there is the fact that they can be destroyed, so it's better if you're running a Knives Out style combo or Blade Cuff and Blade Cuff if you want to replace Flick Knives, if you have the extra resources to combo in more Hurls. And then Deep Blue, simply because unlike Pitching, it allows you to put a card to the bottom of your deck straight away, meaning that it does not interrupt that combo mechanic where we draw. So for instance, that second Spring Tiding in the initial combo allowed us to draw five cards, but we only had four cards. Meaning if you were to use Deep Blue to place a card to the bottom of your deck, you would then still be able to draw into that card. All you'd have to change up is when we play the Concealed Blades. Then there's also Mage Master Boots if you want to combo in a few other action cards. For instance, you can use a Tome of Ferrandale to start off the combo with Mage Master Boots, but then you cannot combo into the extra Stab Wound unless you run something like Art of War. There are lots of ways to tweak this combo, and I'm not saying this is the best version of the combo, but I do think this is a pretty nice starting point for a stalled offensive one-turn kill Benji style deck. Because again, we can pump out a lot of damage in that last round, and it's not that hard, as you might think, to burn through all these cards. The combo itself is made up of 12 cards, bringing our deck total down to 28, minus the one because of the Gorgarian Tome, 27. So if you were to divide that by four, the most cards you could play in a turn, regardless of our plus one draws, then we're able to cycle out our deck in as little as six to seven turns, meaning that's how long you have to stay alive and play defensively to be able to execute this combo. Anyway, that's the deck, so I hope you enjoyed. Let me know if there's any changes you'd make or if you think this deck setup is pretty decent. Again, I'm not too familiar with the competitive scene or actual play. I'm just getting into that side of the game. I'm more of a collector, but it is definitely fun coming up with these mechanics and theory crafting, you know, specific combos. I was very intrigued by the wizard and it's good to see that I could find something for Benji.